that's true. Looks like I'm live. I'm not 100% positive, but I'm thinking I'm live. I'll wait for someone in the chat just to make sure. And I'm going to change I'm going to change chairs really quick because this chair is kind of squeaky. chair's not as comfortable but it's s at least it's not squeaky and I'm actually <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go back to the squeaky chair because this chair is not comfortable and it's and it's too low all right so bear with me as I s I'm just finishing the setting up and my volume's low. Let me see if I can turn the volume up a little bit. I'm using a new microphone, so. Let's see if this makes a difference. I'm trying to turn the gain up a little bit. Let me know if the volume is better now. I know there's a delay, so I'm gonna give it a second. I want I want you obviously to be able to hear me. I just turned the gain up on the volume or on the microphone quite a bit, so better already. So that's the the volume is better, right? All right, good. Good to know. All right, I'm going to turn that off. So I'm not going to be able to see your comments because it's just too much. I have, um, I've got like a couple of cameras going and a microphone and I'm going to use my iPad for some reference material. And for some reason on my YouTube studio on my computer, it says, um, we'll see, the video is unavailable with restricted mode on and I don't have restricted mode on so I don't know why it's saying that but that's pretty annoying but there's not much I can do about it so let's let's get into it and I'm all, I'm all like kind of confused which camera I'm supposed to be looking in because I have two going all right I think it's this camera so I am sorry first of all that I haven't been doing YouTube lives for the past couple weeks but I've just been so busy when, when everything went down with the, the shutdowns and, um, and all that. I, I just was like, well, I'll do these, these YouTube tutorials just to kind of keep people entertained for a couple weeks. And I had no idea it was going to go on for so long. And who knows, there's going to be some areas that are probably going to be in lockdown for quite a bit longer. So a weekly tutorial is not really... Um, feasible because you know it's not just s throwing the the cameras on and doing a tutorial it's obviously planning ahead and so it takes more time than just the the time I'm actually recording and I've been pretty busy I, I'm surprised to be honest with with what's going on I've managed to keep commission some commissions coming in and people pr purchasing things on Etsy which is great but um, I don't have as much time as I thought I'd have and I'm also still in the works with um, a tutorial book which is which I'm really hope hoping works and and comes to fruition because 
then you'll get all of this stuff that I'm I'm giving you via video in a book format, but also way more stuff because I can fit so much more in a book. It'll be more organized. Um, I'll have time to really organize my thoughts and edit them so they make more sense versus just like a live video where I'm talking and maybe not making as much sense um, sometimes because it's hard to do. I'm going to open up the the YouTube for us or the uh, YouTube just so I can see the chat and make sure that the Okay, good. It looks like everything's still good, This the audio and everything, which is good. So anyway, the point is, these take time. I don't have as much time as I thought I would, but I'm going to try to do keep, continue doing them as often as I can. It just won't be weekly. That's just not realistic. So sorry about that, but just stay tuned because on Instagram, I will post when they're, when they're coming up so that you'll have time to... Um, set a reminder but also if you miss them they're obviously going to be available on youtube after so it's not the end of the world if you miss it live let's see what else did i want to say so another thing too i've been work i've been working so hard on a podcast with joe rosher to fort house studios and i think we just recorded our like 20th episode and i i guess only about half of the people that start podcasts make it to pass like the third episode. So we're doing pretty well and we're trying to do it weekly. We've gotten some really cool guests. Um, we had, we just uh, recorded an episode with Spose, who's a, a rapper from this area that will be out soon. We did an episode with Johnny Colt, who was in Leonard Skinner. And he's also a visual artist now. That was a really great episode if you want to check it out. Um, I talked to Hannah Shapiro, who is on the show survivor about mental health and we also talk a lot about just visual arts and the business of visual arts in in all these episodes and we um we have different topics that we deal with and we're going to continue to try to have guests so that's like a focus right that that we're really trying to do weekly that i in my mind is more important than this because it's something that's going to continue on further than you know when the coronavirus pandemic is kind of in the rear view and um, you know, the shutdowns are no longer, but the, the, hopefully the podcast will continue. Whereas these videos, they probably won't. I'll still try to do them here and there, but they, they won't be like this. Um, so definitely if you haven't checked out the thumbnail podcast, check it out. Um, and let's see what else that I want to talk about real quick. Oh, so um, it's, it's just, it's getting old, huh? Sitting at home and wanting to get back to life. I know everyone is just like sick and tired of this. They're sick and tired of being home. But at the same time, you want to be safe. You don't want to, you know, endanger people that you love. So when you do go out, you have to wear a mask. You have to wash your hands frequently. Um, and so it's like a, a balance. And I know there's a lot of people that are unemployed and they're worried that they're not going to get their job back when things open up. So it's a scary time. Um, and so just try to keep yourself busy with things like exercise and art, things like that, that really help your mental health, because, um, you know, you can't just sit there and focus all day on the economy and everything that seems like it's collapsing around you, or you're going to drive yourself nuts. Um, just give it, and you can't just sit there and watch news all day, or that will also drive you nuts. So you have to take time for your mental health. And so we're going to do some drawing exercises. And the reason I wanted to do these is because they're fun and they're short. So there's we're going to do at least four, I think, exercises that I use sometimes just to warm up. They're, they're cool little exercises that teach you some things that maybe you don't know. Uh, they, they may help you loosen up your work a little bit, but they also will help you realize things about drawing that maybe you didn't know or... Maybe you knew deep down, but you you don't apply to your art as much. And there's so many drawing exercises that you can do if you just go on Google and type drawing exercises or fun drawing warm-ups. There's like a plethora of great ones. We're going to do um, a couple that I learned from Emily Flake, who's a New Yorker um, cartoonist. And she came to the main College of Art while I was there. She did a great... Um, 
like tutorial workshop and she did them to show that these particular ones we're going to do, which is um, a no reference drawing and a drawing where we'll take um, a, a subject and we'll draw it in 60 seconds and then we'll draw the same subject in 30 seconds and then in, in um, 10 seconds and then five. And the point is to show you just how quickly you can get the point across of, um, of what you're trying to do. And especially for like cartoonists, because, you know, when you're trying to flesh out ideas for uh, like a one panel or a four panel comic, and you have a lot of different ones you want to get down on paper, you just want to get the ideas down as quick as possible. And you can do that with with not a lot of detail and still people know what you're, you're conveying. And so it helps artists to learn that because oftentimes there's different elements to our drawings and there's there's some that are more important than others if we're doing a landscape and or even a face right and you really want to draw someone's eyes out you know you can do really loose version of the rest of the face or minimal you might even leave some parts out it doesn't matter people will they understand that um, just because something they don't see it doesn't mean it's not there and their mind fills in the blanks so that's the point of these these first two drawings. So let's just let's do a no reference drawing first. And I'm gonna turn my iPad off. As I draw, um, I'm gonna lean in a little bit. So I'll be hopefully the microphone will still pick me up. This is a directional microphone, which means you have to be right on it for it to sound pretty good. The other microphone I was using. You didn't have to be right on it, but it was like, um, it was just so sensitive. It would pick up every little creak and it would pick up, you know, the weird noises your mouth makes when you're breathing. So I didn't like that mic. So hopefully this one is better, but you'll have to tell me in the comments if you think the audio is worse or better in this video, because I can switch back to the other mic. Um, anyway, let's get to it. So enough chattering about... Um, or enough of an intro, right? Let's get into it. So the no reference drawing is so f cool to do because if you think about a child and a child's drawing, if you were to tell a, a child to draw a giraffe, for instance, um, they wouldn't say like, well, I needed to see some photographs so I can use them for reference, right? A, a kid would just draw a giraffe. And the reason is because they know what a giraffe looks like because they're five years old. They've seen giraffes before. And yeah, the, the giraffe that they draw is not going to be perfect, right? But most likely you'll be able to tell that it's a giraffe. And so it, it can be like, a, I don't know, an issue with, with artists that are adults where they always have to see reference material when they're drawing. And it's even when they're just doing like thumbnails and it's just not necessary. You can convey the point without it being perfect. And so I don't have any reference pulled up for this drawing. And I hope that you don't either. Um, the other drawings we do, we will be using reference. The other exercises, this one we will not be. So I'm going to just do an elephant because why not? And... I know that an elephant is, and th this drawing we're just going to do quick. It doesn't matter. We're just going to get the point across, okay? And let me see. I'm going to make sure that I line this up so that I'm staying within the bounds of the, so this is kind of the, the bottom. Okay, so it's not going to be a great detailed drawing. It's just going to get the point across. So you think, okay, an elephant, it has like floppy ears. It's kind of big and fat and it has a trunk and tusks. I kind of know where those things go in my head. I can picture an elephant. You don't have to do an elephant, by the way. You could do a dinosaur or an alligator, whatever you want to draw, but don't look at reference material and, and just see what happens. Um, and, and we'll, we'll go from there. So I'm going to do an elephant, which I think this might be really terrible because I really didn't look at reference material. Um, I was going to do a giraffe, but no, I'll do, I'll do an elephant. 
So I think like their bodies are pretty, I don't know how their back is. I think their heads kind of, kind of go like this. The ears, you can also, let me see. Because this is just a, a, a warm up, you can kind of like mess around with pencil just to kind of figure out. I hope this pencil is dark enough that you can see it. Um, the tail. See, you're going to notice that obviously this is not a great elephant, right? And this is like a kid's drawing of an elephant because they didn't look at a reference. In fact, it's actually pretty pretty bad <laughs> the, the legs probably would be further up but that's who cares it doesn't even matter let's not get into the weeds with this right this is actually a really bad drawing of an elephant but the point is you can tell it's an elephant and, and there's something kind of funny about it um right the fact that it's that's this bad this is why children's drawings are so great to look at though because there's all, they're always a little bit off, um, but you but you know what they drew, and so it's fun. And and I recommend this this one. Do this with as many different animal animals are funner to do this uh, or this with because we see them less often. You're gonna see people all the time, and so we really do know what a person looks like for the most part. You probably don't as much with like zoo animals and safari animals, so. Take some time one day and do drawings like this of, you know, uh, a hippopotamus and a rhinoceros and an alligator and a flamingo. And then compare them with photographs after. And you'll see, like, some of them you'll realize you did a lot better jobs than others. And um, and then before you even look at the reference photos after you're done drawing, just show them to other people. Say, can you tell what this is? They're going to, I almost guarantee that most of the drawings you do, they'll be able to tell. So we're going to turn that over because these are just exercises and they do not really matter as far as, um, they don't matter as far as, I'm not going to, I'm not going to use them for anything. I'm not, they're not like finished work. So the next, um, the next thing I do, I will do a draft. I'm going to put this right here just for a second so you can see the, the reference photo I'm working with. And you don't even need a reference photo for this this next one, but I'm using it because um, just for the heck of it. So th because this one is not as important, this next exercise is not as important that you're not using reference. The point is just to go quick. So we're going to do a drawing of this giraffe in 60 seconds. So obviously we're not going to have a lot of detail. We're just going to get the basics of it. Um, just to kind of capture a giraffe. Then we're going to do the same drawing, but in 30 seconds. Now let's skip that. We're going to do 30 seconds first. We don't even need 60 seconds because we're going to we're going to see how quickly we can get this done. So we're going to do 30 seconds. Then we're going to go right down to 10 seconds. We'll do a drawing of the same giraffe in 10, and then we'll do the same drawing in five seconds. And you'll see how little time you need in order to draw something and you don't need to do a giraffe you can pick whatever you want and um, I think you can pause YouTube live so if you want to pause it for a second and and look up some reference photo to do this exercise with go ahead you don't have to unfortunately I don't have a way to put the reference photo up on the screen I'm trying to think that's probably not possible right now I didn't set it up but so you couldn't use the same reference photo I used but Unless you paused it while I showed it. Hmm. Now, just use your own reference photo. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to do a 30-second drawing of this giraffe. And I just realized that I don't have a timer because my phone is being used, as you can see, it's being used to record. So I'm just going to count in my head to 30 seconds as I draw. All right. Here I go. Oh, wait. First, I want to make sure that... I stay I stay on camera so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. 
So this is the 30 second version. Whoops. I, I think I'm almost at 30 seconds, but I'm not 100% sure because I second version, which was the original plan, I would have time to put um, some little bit of detail in the spots. But you get the idea, right? 60 seconds, you get like a, a giraffe that's kind of half, half detailed. Um, all right, we're going to do the same drawing. I'm going to move that. We're going to do in 10 seconds now. So that's not a lot of time. So you're not going to be able to do a lot of um, detail at all in this. You're just going to get the very general idea. I'm not even going to use this pen because sometimes this pen doesn't, doesn't write as good. And so I'm going to use a pen that I know will at least work so I can capture this in 10 seconds. All right. And I'll count out loud so that you can kind of hear. Make sure I'm all screen. All right, here I go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There you go. There's my 10 second giraffe. Now we're going to do a five second draft. I'm just going to, should I turn the page over? Oh, you can see through it. This is crappy um, printer paper, which you can see right through. So I'll just use a new piece. Five second draft. Here we go. And I'll count out loud for this one too. And so whatever you're drawing, I'm assuming you'll, you're doing a draft too, but whatever you're drawing, you don't have time to do any detail really. You're just getting the, the very basics of it. So here we go. All right, I gotta think for a second, okay. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. So as you can see, in five seconds, I drew something that's pretty terrible, but at the same time, it's it's a giraffe. I mean, if I wanted to do like a, a little comic with a giraffe and an elephant and some speech bubbles and a little joke I could probably do it in a minute and get the the point across so that people could tell what that was and and the reason these these exercises were are so cool the no reference and and this is because when you're doing like a lot of thumbnailing if you're doing an illustration for someone and you've just got a lot of ideas you're trying to just flesh out um, these, this will save you so much time rather than like sitting there and worrying about detail at this stage, right? And I've done drawings, like really quick drawings and have them turn out actually pretty decent. Not, not so much these, <laughs> but sometimes you, you'll surprise yourself. So these two exercises that we just did are more of the quicker ones. The next ones we do are going to be, um, a little, they'll take a little bit more time. They're not like really time consuming but they're a little bit more time consuming than that and you might find them a little bit a little bit more challenging a little funner I don't know so the next one we're gonna do is an upside down drawing and you would like to, you should use a reference for this obviously because the whole point is that it's upside down and so you need to look at something from um, a different angle than you normally would and the point of this is that we generally draw what we know. And so if you're looking at a reference photo, oftentimes you're looking at something that you've seen a lot before. So you're looking at a person's face or a picture of an animal or whatever, a car, 
and you know what those things are kind of supposed to look like. And so you are looking at the reference photo, but you're using like your own bias kind of in a way when you're when you're drawing with from those things because you kind of know what they're supposed to look like, right? However, when you take an object and you flip it upside down, it messes with your brain enough that now you really can't just draw what you know. You have to draw what you actually see. And so you can... They actually recommend this exercise to be done with something with a simple shapes at first. So maybe just turn a vase over or a photograph of a vase or or um, a cup, things like that that are easy. I'm going to use a face for this just because I draw a lot of faces and I don't do this exercise a lot. And so it is a little bit challenging for me um, because I don't draw what I see often. Often I draw what I know. And I exaggerate what I know. And so drawing from what I exactly what I see is hard. But it, it really does train you in a way that is cool. So I have chosen some... Let's see. I think I'm going to use this reference photo that I just found on Google. I'll just plop it here for a second. And you could take a screenshot. I wouldn't just go look at photography on Google, like Google search photography and use these as reference for like finished pieces of art because this is a photograph that a photographer, it's their art. And if you're doing like copies of that stuff, you're getting into some weird copyright stuff, unless you're going to change it quite a bit. Um, but for exercises, I just Google things all the time for, for reference photos. If it's just for an exercise or something that's not going to be turned into finished art. So that's what I did here. I just Googled like, um, portrait photography or something. I can't remember. And so this is the, the one I chose because I, I think that there's some interesting shapes going on in here that I can try to draw. Um, and I'll probably draw with just some pens to get some shapes and lines, maybe some, a thin pen to kind of start mapping things out a little bit and then a thick um if you're just doing it as an exercise if you're doing it as as more of like something to do a finished piece of art maybe you want to take your time and go into it with detail and then once you're done fleshing it out you can turn it right side up and, and continue working on it um for the for the purposes of this i'm just going to work on it for 10 to 15 minutes or, or maybe less i don't know um but anyway i'm going to set that there and I'm going to start working on it. So, like I said, the cool thing about this exercise is you are drawing what you see, not what you know. And I'm trying to, again, just make a line at the bottom so I know where the bottom of the screen is. I really don't want to go off camera because you won't be able to see what I'm doing. This is a little bit challenging because I have this camera that's filming what I'm doing, but it's kind of right in the way of the reference photo because of where I normally put reference work. So I'm going to kind of change the position so I can see it better. It's a little lower, but it's fine. All right. So here I go. I'm going to do some shapes and go from there. I wish that I had thought thought this out a little bit better because I could have um, had these whenever I'm using reference photos like this, I could have had them up on the screen and then you would have been able to use the same one or at least see it. But while I'm working, um, I did that before, but I think because of this, this particular um, video I'm there was a couple exercises and there's a couple different reference photos that I was working from I just thought this might be the better um or I, th I think I just didn't take the time to figure out how to flesh out or how to uh, put all the different photos I was going to be using sorry I'm kind of half paying attention to what I'm saying while I'm drawing um I'm not that really that worried about accuracy or not accuracy um well yeah kind of accuracy with this because this is such a thin pen and i'm going to go in with a thicker pen over this and so 
if um, if I want to move some things around a bit, I can. That's another option with pens. Like, if you use like a really thin pen at first, you can treat it like a light pencil, and so you can still move things if you're using a thicker line for the the finished work. If that makes sense, um, because and it kind of has a cool look to it, like a more sketchy look. You see um, people draw with like big pens. They always do like a lot of the, um, like this type of thing where they're fleshing out lines and shapes with, um, you know, like, I don't even know what you would call that, but I've never been a person that does that a lot. Um, well, I'm, I'll move this for a second so I can show you what I'm talking about, not on the on that. But, you know the people that, uh, I shouldn't have done that. I'll just do it on the back of this. You know the people that when they draw, they kind of like will, they'll kind of like flesh out shapes with, with their, their pen or their pencil even. Um, and so, and then they can kind of go back into it and make it darker and use more. I know you I know you know what I'm talking about where you're just kind of going quick and using a lot of lines over and over in the same spot to flesh out shapes, right? Um I've kind of never been a person that does that. I usually I'll just kind of go in with the line and you know whatever happens kind of happens and you know there's ways to fix that after that don't involve like a crazy amount of weird fleshing out. So, oops, going back to upside down, sorry. So, this is like um, probably one of my favorite exercises to do, even though it's not something I do a lot of, just because it's the, the thing I'm probably the, the worst at drawing what I see versus drawing um, what I know. And I, I even do that with portraits of people sometimes because, um, well, for instance, I just did a portrait of um, of Larry David and also Jerry Stiller. Those were the most recent portraits I did. And I just know those people. Like I know, I don't know them personally, but I know... Um, I've seen their face so much on TV that I kind of, I just know what their face looks like. And so doing a portrait of them, I can kind of tell if it's starting to look off without even looking up at the photograph I'm using. And I can, I know if it looks like them without really looking much at the reference photo. And so which actually is better for me because whenever I do, um, I do a lot of commissions for people that are portraits of like their family members or their friends. And they send me like a couple of photographs, maybe one photograph to work from. I hate that. I like it when they at least send me a, a couple. And I'll tell you why. For one thing, when you send me one photograph to work from, I don't know your friend, right? And so I don't actually know what they look like. And there's sometimes like photo. Have you ever seen a photograph of yourself or of a friend and it just doesn't even really look like you, right? And so that happens a lot with photographs and I don't really know why. But if someone sends me a reference photo of their friend and what if it is one that doesn't maybe necessarily look like them as much as say another photograph, I'm not going to really know if the picture I do is even that accurate because I just don't know what their friend is supposed to look like. And so the best the best is when someone sends me like multiple photos and even better than that is when someone sends me like a video um, just because the more I can take a look at their friend and, or their the, um, person I'm drawing, the better the 
finished piece is going to be, the more it's going to actually look like the person because I'm starting to get an idea for what that person looks like. Um, right? So I could get a reference photo of you and if it's not a great photo of you and it just doesn't really look like you that much, then even if I nail the portrait, I get it to look just like the photograph. It's not really going to look like you because that photograph wasn't a good one. And sometimes when people especially when people pick photographs of themselves that they want me to use as reference photos, like people are just, um, they're not great at picking photos of themselves that look the most like them because they want, they would prefer to look a, or to pick a photograph of themselves. That's the, the most flattering rather than the most, um, accurate. So you're almost better off having, if you want an artist to do a portrait of you, you're almost better off having a friend of yours pick the photograph for the artist to work from. Just because they're going to be more likely to pick one that looks the most like you. And if you look terrible in every picture, then... Maybe that's just what you look like. I don't know. I always think, thought, oh, I, I hated pictures of myself. But it just finally, like, hit me, like, oh, I guess that's just what I look like. And I just have to be okay with it. I hope that, on, especially on this particular one and the next um, exercise, which is going to be something kind of similar to this. I hope that you guys can send me some photographs of, of the work that you're doing so that I can see what, what you did with these exercises, especially this upside down one. And and show me the, if you can do like a side by side of the photograph you used. Maybe you, you were able to pause this video and, and take a screenshot of the, and use the same um, I'm going to try to, I don't know if this is going to work. This is, um, when you do like, when you do drawings of, um, people from different cultures, you definitely have to be more sensitive because, I mean, this is obviously just an upside down drawing. It's not such a big thing, but if you're doing, I always am more um, conscious when I do um, drawings of people from different races that, um, I don't know, you don't want to like caricature people in an insensitive way. And when you do this um, exercise, so if you take this and do this um, more and try and continue trying this um, particular exercise, try not to look at it until you're basically done. Like, don't turn it right side up. That way you can have a fun surprise at the end to see what it, it actually looks like. And um, it might be it might be a good surprise. It might not be. <laughs> trying to think of um could I talk about so where I live in Maine um all right I know what I'll talk about in the area I live in Maine it's like 
pretty much well i think i saw on the news that um maine is going to be the most negatively affected economically from the shutdowns because it is such um a tour it's the economy here is so based on tourism even more than um than nevada which has uh, las vegas which is all tourism but maine is it's just so much tourism we have some really beautiful towns here like bar harbor and and portland and um york wells kenny bunkport um and they're they're just great beach towns right and so there's just so many small businesses here that are um almost fully dependent on tourists and tourism and so the longer the well not just the shutdowns too right because on june 1st the hotels and restaurants are able to open but they're not going to be able to book um what's the word i'm looking for from out of state guests so they're only going to be able to have um mainers which i mean most mainers aren't don't vacation in their own state and so i can't imagine the hotels are going to be incredibly busy because of that and um of course restaurants like everywhere are only able are going to only be able to have like um 25 i think 25 percent occupancy at first so and it's going to be um what do you call it reservation only so it's i i'm just kind of talking about it because it's um it's really sad to see. I mean, obviously, coronavirus. Let's let's not pretend that money is as, as important as lives. But we also realize that um, when when people are financially destitute, that actually can cost lives. So it's sad to see so many people put so much into some things. You know, some people probably put maybe decades no definitely decades into some of these small businesses that may never may never open again may never maybe they will open but they'll never get to where they were um who knows how many people will be permanently laid off and won't have that same job to go back to and you know i don't think that should be minimized I don't think that it's a necessarily a matter of if you if you really want to go back to work that you're because um, you don't love old people or something. I don't know. I just feel like it's sad. It's just a sad situation. And I'm very grateful for the situation that I'm in because I work from home and um, I've been able to maintain some some level of of business through this um uh, but my wife does work at a hotel and she's a spa director and so which basically means that she's the she runs the spa at the hotel you know the they do facials and they do um massages and they have a gym and stuff but that stuff's all not not reopening right now i don't think till july and even then it's going to have to there's going to be services they won't be able to do and some they'll have to be done in a different way and so it's going to be a huge change for for a lot of people and i think she's also worried because she's a spa director like um i'm just putting like some vine in here for some shadow but you know, a lot of the people on unemployment are getting paid, you know, $600 extra. And so maybe they won't even want to go back to work. Hopefully they're... I, I know when they do... When they do open and they do have to go... They go back in, they're going to take a lot of safety precautions and, you know, 
lots of social distancing, lots of, um, lots of gloves and lots of sanitizing things. It's pretty, pretty awful situation. All right, I'm gonna turn this over because I'm about ready to see what it looks like. All right, so that is. That's not bad for an upside down drawing. Some there's like obviously this eye here, <laughs> as you can see. Um, my brain kind of transposed this a little bit, right? The eye shouldn't be going up like that. It should be going down. But you know, once you're finished a drawing, like or not finished, but once you get to this point, you can go back, go into it, and kind of tweak things a little bit and. Um, Could work on the mouth more, but you get the point. So this is cool, right? It's an upside down drawing I did. Let's see if I can put it um, next to the reference. Um, turn it right back, right side up. So it's not, looks kind of like the reference, right? I could do some more shading under here and continue working on it, but this was a fun one. Let's do the last exercise. And for this one, it's going to be one that I bet a lot of you have done before. Um, and let's see. This one, you could also use a reference photo. Well, no, you need a reference photo for it. Not you could use when you need one. And I'm going to use, I'll show you the reference photo I'm using again. I guess I'll just use this piece of paper underneath. All right, so we're gonna do a blind contour drawing and you can do, just so you know, there's different ways you can do this. Some people do, um, some people do like a continuous line blind contour where they don't lift their pen and they just, you know, do it all in one line. Um, some people will cheat a little bit and look at the page occasionally just to see what's going on. Um, I sometimes do that. Um, but the point is you're looking at a reference photo and you're not looking at the paper. And if you need to put like a piece of paper over your hand so that you don't cheat, then go for it. But hopefully you have the willpower to just do this without um, without that. This is another one that I'm just gonna use a, a portrait. There you go, I'm gonna use this I like to use black and white reference photos if I can, and if, if I don't have a black and white photo, I, I sometimes will bring it into um, Photoshop or you know any type of thing like that and just take the color out of it. And sometimes if you even up the contrast, like on this picture, it makes it easier to see the details and see the lines. Um, I like to work from a photo like this with a lot of lines, especially on blind contours. It just makes it funner. Um, the only thing that I don't like about blind contour drawings is I like to usually draw with fountain pens and fountain pens. You really kind of have to look at what you're doing because, um, some angles when you're drawing at some angles, they don't, the ink doesn't come out right. And so for blind contour drawings, they don't work that well. So I'm going to use just like a Copic or a Copic liner, I think, because you, you don't have to look at that. It, it, the ink comes out just fine no matter what angle. So this is the photograph I'm going to use. What else one did I have? I was thinking about doing like a skull like this for the blind contour, but I think I'm going to do, just do a face because um, I think if I do, if I do a skull drawing, I kind of want to look at what I'm doing because I've haven't done them in a while. I like to do blind contours of top or subjects that I, I draw a lot because I have more of a feel for it, but maybe that's a bad idea. Maybe you should do it of something that you never draw. That way you're really loose and able to be more free. I will say that this exercise is probably the best one for loosening up, right? Because you really start to see that um, 
details and stuff like that don't really matter and placement of things doesn't matter as much um as you'll see when i draw the and uh, things are going to end up kind of all over the place if you've never done a blind contour i'll be surprised i'd be surprised if you've been drawing for a while but if not this will be a fun, definitely a fun exercise for you um i'm just do as you can see what i'm doing i'm zoning in the square that's on screen so that I don't go outside of it. Perfect. Okay. I have two photographs. Make sure I'm not cheating. My my um, reference photo is kind of near the page because this is in the way, so I'm going to do my best not to look, though. And I'm just going to look at the photo. And like I said with these, I'm I'm not doing the one um I'm not doing the one where it's a continuous line. I don't mind lifting my pa uh my my pen up. In fact, I kind of like to do it because like that because it makes I don't know, I don't always know where I am on the page that way and sometimes things that end up in interesting spots where they wouldn't have maybe necessarily. So the cool thing about these is sometimes they come out really cool and sometimes they come out terribly. <laughs> But I've definitely turned some, not all, but I've definitely turned some blind contour drawings into um, finished pieces. I can't wait to see your, your blind contour drawings that you send me or you put up on um, Instagram. Just do like hashtag Lewis. No, what should you do? Yeah, just do my name, Lewis Exercises. Hashtag Lewis Exercises. And that way we, we can all kind of see what, what each other did. And keep checking because a lot of people watch these most of the people that watch these actually don't watch them live they watch them um after and so if you keep checking those hashtags you'll notice that um most people actually post the next couple days rather than today Oops. So, okay, I'm looking. So what I like to do sometimes is, well, maybe I'll do, um, I have another, well, no, I'm going to finish this piece instead. I was going to say I'll do another blind contour. Maybe I will in a minute, but I'm going to take just some time. So this is what I like to do. If See, I think this one came out kind of interesting. And so what I like to do with ones like this that come out kind of interesting is keep going with them. Um, but I'm going to look now because I've done the, the majority of it without looking or the, the main part of it. And so it's kind of interesting to... Um, to add like a body and finish this, flesh this out a bit more. I 
I like this. This is actually a pretty decent pen. It's a Copic Multiliner 1.0, so it's got a nice thick line. Um, it's not a pen, bad pen at all. It, it's um, if you like the Copic markers, you'll probably like this this Multiliner. It's a decent quality. Um, And when you're when you do a, a drawing like this, and then you decide you want to go in, and and kind of start fleshing it out a little bit more, you can look at that while you're doing it, but don't don't tighten up just because you start to look at it, because that can be a, a habit that people have. Like realize that this drawing is is supposed to be kind of a mess. And so try to keep that in mind when you go in and continue working on it. Like you don't all of a sudden want to have like a perfect body that doesn't match the weirdness of the head. Although maybe that would be interesting. I don't know. Now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I don't know. I think I did this in another video, but let me show you something. So I think I did this in my digital video, but... Um, I don't think there's many people watch that. So what some this is what I do sometimes. Okay. I will take my iPad, as you can see. Well, you can't really see, but I'll show you in a second. What the heck? Okay, so as you see, I took actually took a photograph on my iPad of the drawing I was doing, and I'll just um, brighten it up a bit so that it's easier to work on and for easier for you to see. I would I think that it's easier for you to see if it's brighter. I don't know, maybe not. But I don't always do this right but I'm, I just want to show you because it's a kind of a trick some, that I do sometimes and it's not really a trick but let's say I want to add uh, words on this piece and I'm not really sure about where I want to add them so as I've gotten more confident and comfortable with drawing I tend to have a pretty good intuition and know where I want to place things um, but when I first started, that wasn't necessarily true. And so I did this more often back then, right? Where I would write something. I don't know what I want to write. Um, doesn't really matter. Let's write my name. All right. Now what I can do, oops, I messed up. I gotta do it again. So the whole point, what I was trying to do, I'll do it really quick. I wanted to do it on a different layer because now what I can do is kind of mess with the placement of it like and and kind of see all right if I do want to put some text on here where would it look the best and I can try out different spots I know that the um the glare on that screen is probably not the greatest because of the lighting and so it's harder for you to see um and I can like do different angles and stuff. I kind of maybe like it there, right? So now I know where I want to put text. If I or if you even want to put text, I'm just saying. The point is that you can use your iPad or your digital tools to your advantage and take photographs of your half done work and then work on them digitally and kind of that way you can continue moving things around. You're not really committing to anything. 
and kind of figure things out that way, right? I don't know. And you can continue doing them um, as warm-ups. Um, some of them are obviously shorter, um, but but they they hopefully taught you things. They taught you that things don't need to be perfect. Obviously, you can do things quickly. You can do things without really looking, and and you you still end up with an interesting um, piece of art. You can do drawings without references and still translate the point that you're trying to to make. Um, and you can draw very quickly. In five seconds, I did a giraffe. So, I don't know. These are just fun exercises. Anyway, I hope you guys had fun. I'm going to peace out. And thanks for joining me.